is the 2022 Truck Marlin 5 the best budget mountain bike you can buy? After trying and testing, I made this video to answer just that question. Although based on looks, this bike doesn't look like it got many changes, if we dive deeper into the specs and how the bike feels, there are some quality changes to the bike. I'm going to break this video down into six main components, the sizing, frame, suspension, specifications, riding and durability. As always, these will be in the video's chapters as well as listed below in the description. The Marlin 5 comes in at 750 AUD or 600 USD which makes for a really good affordable and budget bike perfect for entry level mountain biking and commuting. It comes in 7 different frame sizes from extra small to extra extra large. They do have wheel specific sizing with extra small to small bikes having 27.5 inch wheels and medium to extra extra large bikes having 29 inch wheels. The 27.5 inch bikes do have a curved top tube like this bike which lowers the standover height making it ideal for smaller people. The frame on this bike is made out of alpha silver aluminium which keeps it reasonably lightweight meaning it comes in at 14 kilos. They do also have internal cable routing which is really quite good to see for a bike in this price range. Although there is no internal cable routing at the rear, this does make the bike easier to service. This means the Marlin has a very clean look about it and it's very visually appealing to the eye. Moving on to the suspension, because this is a hardtail it is rigid at the back meaning no rear shock but there is suspension forks at the front which we'll talk about now. The forks are the Suntour XCT30s which have 100mm of travel and 30mm stanchions. The stanchions are 2mm thicker compared to the 2021 models which means they do provide just a little bit of extra strength and durability. They are coil forks which means not as much adjustment but wanting air forks in this price range would be asking a lot. A nice feature on them is that they have hydraulic lockout which really helps on the climbs because it eliminates the compression of the suspension. Overall though they are a downgrade from last year's forks and they are just not that good. They are fine for riding to work and commuting but where you actually want suspension on the trail they don't perform too well. The Trek Marlin 5 does deliver quite a lot of bang for your buck. Even though the Suntour XCT forks aren't the best, you aren't going to be riding huge drops, jumps and rough trails on this bike. The drivetrain is one of the major upgrades from last year. It now comes with a 2x8 system instead of a 3x7 and it comes with the Shimano Altus instead of the Tourney, so it's nice to see a bit better components on this year's model. Onto the wheel set, the bike has the Bontrager XR2 Comp tyres which are 2.2 inches thick. They do suit the purpose of the bike as they are fine for off-road but don't provide much resistance and have a fast rolling speed on the road, unlike the tyres on my T7 which aren't really all round and slow you down a lot on the road. The rims are the Bontrail connection and they're pretty average so they're not that bad but they're not really amazing either. The brakes are the Tektra HD M276s and they are hydraulic disc brakes so they do provide good braking power especially for a bike in this price range. Moving on to the finishing kit, I really don't like the Bontrail XR endurance grips. I personally just don't like this style of grips but there are people out there who do like them so this is really down to personal preference and they don't cost much to switch out. The nylon flat pedals are alright, they do have some knobs sticking out but I personally prefer flat pedals with pins but again this is all just up to personal preference. The seat is the Bontrager Avada and it's actually a really comfortable seat even after a long day of riding. The stem and bars are quite a good size, even though I prefer a shorter stem and longer bars, the longer stem and swept back bars on the Marlin 5 still feel surprisingly nice to ride even though they are suited more for the road. After taking the Marlin out for some light trail riding, it feels quite nice and a lot better than some of the other budget hardtails out there. Despite the suspension not being the best, it still feels smooth when riding off-road. Back to the suspension though, the forks do feel a bit like a pogo stick and they don't have very smooth compression or rebound. The only other problem I had when riding it was the chain coming off, but that's a problem with 2 and 3 by drive trains, so it's not only unique to this bike. The chain came off when I shifted down quickly or when I did some jumps, because there's no clutch on the derailleur, it came off then as well. Other than that though, the bike shifted smoothly and climbed really well. I have only had this bike for a few weeks so I can't say much about the durability in the long term but so far it's held up well to the elements. The paint is quite tough and resistant and as expected so far the components like the suspension, group set and wheels haven't had any premature wear or damage. I will make an update video on this in the future however to see how this bike performs in the long run. Overall, I think this bike has held up well to its expectations and it serves its purpose well as a budget hardtail for entry level mountain biking and commuting. I would recommend it to people who are just starting out in mountain biking or you ride to work and you just like to hit some nice light trails on the weekends.
Other than the forks not being that great, I think this bike is a really good starter bike and I would say that it has the quality, value and fun factor that you're looking for in this price range. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. If you like this sort of style of review or just some of the other bikes featured in this video, check out these videos right here. I'd like to say thanks to my friend for letting me use his bike to film this review. But other than that, have a good day, like and subscribe for more mountain biking content like this and I'll see you in the next video.